dá uma fria. Und wir zahlt nicht mal, wir kriegen es geschenkt. Hm. Hm. Das Geschäftsmodell ist interessant. <lacht> She said, and, and they don't even pay for it. Yeah, they get it all for free. Er hat mich irgendwo im falschen Wasser gewaschen. Ich bin so heiß gebadet. If you're not ticking normally, you use the expression they have a, a bath you in hot water. So I mean some of your brain cells. Has been bathed in too hot water. water, therefore he is a little bit crazy. Ah. Bust into water? Yeah, I've never heard that. No, I mean that. Uh, that was to me. Mm. <coughs> oh, if you, if you know some of the German expressions, <laughs> I mean yeah. there. Ah. I don't know where they're coming from. Teufel Fliegen one is nice though, I don't know. Eating flies. <laughs> the devil eating flies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know where it comes from, but the speech word when we talk about the devil, speaking of the devil, but you have the same thing. Yes, yes. And speaking talk of, of the, the devil, devil, the yeah. devil appears. Yes. Okay, so take a rest. Is it comfortable? Victor, you must be not my, you must be not my trippin. Yeah, okay. You know, what's the side and knot? Nein, zeit, zeitlich. Da, äh, was ist es bald von dir aus? Ja, weiß ich jetzt nicht. Ja, okay. genau. Solange bis es angeht. Ein, zwei Sekunden. Ah, okay. So. So we decided to to speak a little bit English for our guest that flew all the way from Scotland to here. It's the airplane that was doing the flying. Yeah. <laughs> well, but it's. You, you're doing the sitting, and then it's much more uncomfortable, especially, you know, flying to Thailand 11 hours. It's mm. <coughs> not really uncomfortable. So I was thinking of, maybe you, you do have a topic that interests you. Mm. Uh, toad, death. Death. Oh, how to deal with that? Yes. <coughs> One of the main points of my visiting here after four years. It's reminding the people about the importance of looking after their heart or the importance of practice so that, that they don't get caught up 
in the way of life. <coughs> If we are not within a Buddhist community or living with other Buddhist fellows or are close to Buddhist monasteries, I mean, we live the way of the people around us. If we live in Thailand or live close to a Buddhist community, we are reminded Often, in Thailand, the people are reminded daily when they see the monks walking through the streets <clears throat> that there is something else that is important in life, or that there is more to life than we see. And this importance is mostly in Asian countries, it's given to the people Every day, when you see the monks walking for Pindapad, for Armstrong, but here we don't have it because we live in closed houses. And nowadays we hardly speak to our neighbors. <clears throat> so we tend to be on our own and forgot the important things that, that we will need when we pass over to our next life. <clears throat> Passing over is mostly called death. So the important thing that the Lord Buddha taught us in this life is not only for the lay people, the five precepts, but looking after our heart. Because the heart or the chitta is the thing that that will pass on into the next life. It's not what makes it reborn, because what makes it reborn is karma. But the chitta, the combination of the kilesas together with the chitta, is going to be in the next life. So if we do everything on the outside, if we have our work, earn our money, <clears throat> live our life, huh? build a house, or, or put everything on material things, and especially now, when you look at the West, you know, I'm, I'm in the importance of the body, of exercising the body, of taking care of the body, of all these different kinds of cooking for the health of the body. I mean, there are, when you look from the Buddhist point of view, I mean, pretty much in vain. Because in the end, all our work, is left. It's useless when we face death. Whatever we did to this body was a work that required our <clears throat> our effort, ninety-five percent of our time. I mean, first the work for eight hours, yeah. Then they buy expensive things to train the body. <laughs> buy expensive things in order to take care of their skin go to the hairdresser, it's all expensive, yeah? eat expensive food, yeah? the more, uh, the more uh, what is it, micro or macrobiotic Ayurveda and things like that, cooking, you know, I mean it's all expensive and in the end it doesn't help us because we have forgotten that at the beginning of our time as a human being it was the time set for our death was already in our body. So no matter how good, how well we take our, our body, take care of our body, or how bad we take care of our body, we cannot extend our time of living. Because the time of our living is determined by our previous life, by our wholesomeness, Proverbs are the being. That's what the Lord Buddha teaches. Takers of life will have a short life. Non-takers of life will have a long life. So all the effort that we do, and now, I mean, when you, when you look at it, 
I mean in the West, I mean body, 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 exercising body, you know, now all the, all the people, you know, mid-age, you know, I mean having their mountain bike or whatever, they, their, their exercising bikes riding on the, riding on the roads, yeah. It's rather useless because it will die at a certain time that is already destined at the time of birth. And that's what we use our time. And it is, you know, it is common. And that's how we, how we lose track of what is important in our life. We do, lose, we do lose the track because, I mean, our society places everything on so unimportant things that we lose the direction to go into. What is important is our heart, because the heart is the, <clears throat> is the director of the body. The chitta is the director. If the chitta sleeps, you know the body doesn't do anything. It doesn't need anything. You yeah? can't stay there for seven days. Yeah? You don't even need to drink water in that time, yeah? because you're dead. Yeah? When you come back into the body, you know, then then the body, you know, goes on. You know, just like the car, you leave it around for seven days. You know, you you, you don't need it. Yeah? So, but the moment you, you open the car door, you know, you get in. You know, you drive away. Yeah? And people don't realize the separation that the body is not that the body is not self, that the body and the chitta do different things, that the chitta is the driver of the car. Yeah? And to get this, to get to the separation, I mean I I devised, you know, the Lord Buddha devised actually a very nice <coughs> simile, the simile of you know, of the car. Yeah? Once you take the car apart, where's the car? There are only planks, there are only wheels, you know, there are some, the axle and, and things like that. Yeah? But where's the car? Yeah? You see nuts, bolts, planks, you know, I mean, you don't see a car. Yeah? So the car exists only in our mind. The body exists in our mind. Yeah? And it is an important part. And we, we mix it up. Yeah? Of course, you know, our chitta was born, you know, at the time of birth, the chitta was inside this body. So we think we are born in the car, you know, we die in the car, so I mean, we, we look after this car and, you know, we are afraid, you know, the moment the car, you know, dies away. I mean, a driver who knows, you know, who gets in and gets out of the car, you know, so I mean, so, so what, you know, it's just a body. It's just a car, yeah. The car breaks down, car goes to the scrapyard and, and then, you know, what we need to die, do is, if you want another car, you know, we just get another car. Yeah? So, for us, you know, to prepare for death, you know, is to get this understanding that the chitta is the most important thing and that we have to look after it. And, and in order to look after it, we have to practice, we have to meditate. Yeah? I mean, we have to get the heart calm, so, so that the heart doesn't do so much harm to us. We have to get it really calm. And once it is really calm, we will have to contemplate. And the first thing that we have to contemplate is the body is not self. Anatta. The principle of anatta. The body is not self. The body is something that we can feel, that we can see. And then we have to ask, who is the one? Who knows that there is a feeling of a body, or bodily feeling, and who knows that there is a seeing of the body, bodily seeing? Hmm? Who is the one who knows all these things? And if we are able to go down to the knowingness of the chitta, I mean, then we realize, I mean, that is much more... <coughs> that's much more likely what we would call I and mine, then anything, you know, that comes in contact with the chitta. And the body is that the most important thing that comes in contact with the chitta. And we love it because we can express so many things with this body. Mentally, physically, I mean, look at all our cities, you know, I mean, it's a physical expression of this chitta. Look at the art, it's a physical expression of the chitta. Look at the music, yeah? look at the books, the writers and the, and the novels, you know, I mean, it's all, it's all expression. I mean, 
For it, you know, it needs to have a body to be able to express these things. I mean, these monuments that we build on earth, you know, for forever, you know, we, we saw, you know, we built them forever, but we know in the end nothing will last. All the monuments from <coughs> from a thousand years ago, most of them are actually destroyed. Yeah? Some of them yeah, lasted through life. All these things are nature. All these things are anatta. They don't belong to me. As much as I can see, I can see a church, you know, or I can see a tree. I can see this body. So, I mean, I don't call myself to be a tree. I don't call myself to be a body. <coughs> I don't call myself to be a church. But the problem is I call myself this body. That's me. That's mine. That's my identification. And if that identification disappears in death, you know, I mean, then we are scared. But if we do our practice, and the more we do our practice, and the more we do our contemplation, the more we realize, I mean, this body has nothing nothing whatsoever to do with this chitta. It just happens that this chitta inhabits this body. Just like, you know, any kind, kind of driver, you know, ha, um, possesses a car. But, I mean, he has, he has nothing to do with the car or the material that is made of the car or the instruments within the car. And so, the chitta has nothing to do, you know, with, with the material the body is made of. It has nothing to do with the structure. I mean, it just uses it for its own comfort. Yeah? Or, mostly, sadly, for its own entertainment. It's the entertainment factory. Yeah? It's the entertainment <coughs> embodiment of entertainment. Yeah? And that's why we love it. Yeah? When, we, when we think about you know, the senses, you know, love, love to hear, you know? we love to hear the, the birds singing. Yeah? We don't like to hear the, 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 <coughs> the noise of, of other people or don't like to hear the noise of motorbikes and you know, they're roaring up. Yeah? Some, some people like it, but most of us, yeah, when we like singing birds, then we don't like this. Yeah? So the sense of hearing, the sense of smelling, the sense of seeing, the sense of touching, and the sense of thinking. So, I mean, some of us, you know, love the sense of seeing, others of us love, love the sense of thinking. Yeah? And that's why we got incarnated in this body, yeah? incarnated in this biological robot that does everything that the chitta wants. It doesn't do the things that the chitta does not want. And that is something that we have to really understand. The body doesn't do anything that the chitta doesn't want. So, I mean, looking at our expressions of the body is an expression of our chitta. Looking how well we keep our body or how we style the body is an expression of the chitta. Yeah? Because the body is a body, yeah? and the body just differs <coughs> because of our, like our chitta. Did. So, understanding, understanding this, that we are not the body, it's a very crucial understanding and it is also one of the fetters, one of the ten fetters and one of the first three fetters that bind us to the realm of existence. If we can cut down this understanding that we are the body, I mean, we don't have to worry about anything. If we, have, if we keep the sila, the second fetter, don't fiddle around with the sila, don't break it, then, then we also have the understanding of the second fetter. Huh? Then we can let it go. Hmm? And the first fetter is the doubt, you know. There is doubt that there is exist heaven, that there is exist hell, that there exist karma, that there exist beings in heaven and beings in hell and all the other realms. Yeah? That doubt, you know, is also one of the fetters, is one of the three fetters that binds us to this realm of existence. If we can cut down them to a minimum and have enough power to reach a deeper state of samadhi, we can get rid of it and we can actually enter the street. So you see that 
for, for some of us, or for most of us later on, this identification with the body keeps us in this realm. Keeps us in this realm, you know, being born over and over and over again. So we do have to understand that we are not the body, you know. Let, you know, take care of the body just like you take care of your car. Or your bicycle. I mean, you oil the chain and that's it, you know. And then you put, you put some, some air into the tires and that's it. Yeah? Now with the car you give it water, you give it gasoline and... and <clears throat> Whatever it needs, yeah? we don't do that. Yeah? I mean, we we, we over polish the car, you know, and every every little every little speck of dust, you know, on the car. I mean, we wipe it off, you know, we cover it up with things like that. That's so that we can't see the reality. Yeah? I mean, if you look in a car in an old engine, you know, it's full of oil, you know. I mean, it's really dirty. It's not like when you, you bought it brand new. I mean, you look at it and the engine looks nice, yeah? but after 20 years the engine looks just rocket yeah? and, and very dirty. Yeah? And that's the same thing. When we open up this body, I mean, it looks, it looks disgusting. And nobody actually has to tell us that it is disgusting. It's just the nature of this body, but we love it. Because we can express, or the chitta can express all these things. That's why it loves it, yeah? I mean, the hands are so flexible. I mean, we can do all sorts of things with these hands, yeah? We can create a lot of things. Small, fine art, you know, or coarse art and things like <clears throat> Another thing, huh? We can think, you know, I mean, Most of our society and I loves, you know, loves to entertain themselves with thinking. You know? It's only part of this body. This body is nothing else, you know, than, than this car, you know, that gives us the, the mobility. It gives us a sense of mobility. It, it gives us a sense of <coughs> security. Yeah? In the rain we get into the car, you know, we don't feel the rain. And things like that. And it can drive us from, from one place to the other. And, and we, can, we can do a lot of things in the car. Yeah? So this, this body gives us gives us enormous power over creation. Small creations, of course, you know, creations that the, the, the mind can create, or creations that, the, that our body, you know, our, our hands can create, be it fine, fine arts or, you know, be it, more, be it big buildings, yeah? like sky, skyscrapers or huge bridges and things like that. Or cars or rockets, you know, going in outer space. Yeah? That's the expression of the chitta. And we have to separate that out. We have to see the chitta. Or we have to get, get the chitta outside of this body and have a look at this body so that it can understand, that it can click, that this body is not us. And once it clicks, the death of the body is not a problem at all. I mean, you just get out of the car that is gone, yeah? leave it behind, scrap it, don't even shed one tear of it, you know, you just go and go to a new car dealer and get a new one, yeah? if you have the money. Yeah? I mean, if you kept the five precepts, I mean, then you can get a new body. Yeah? <clears throat> that is the kind of money that you need to get a human body. Yeah? If, if you want to have a more sophisticated body, like the, the heavenly bodies, I mean, then you, you need to have a little bit more money or a little bit more merit. That's fine, as long as we understand. Yeah. It is not, it's not me, it's not mine, it doesn't belong to me. But it is like, yeah, I mean, it is like a marriage. Yeah. The chitta is married to this body and, and it is in, unable to separate out. It feels lost without a body. So it needs this body and is attracted towards the body. But yet the chitta really does not understand the true nature of the body. It does not yet understand because it has been attracted too, too long of a time that it cannot recall there wasn't always a body. <clears throat> and that's why it gets attracted, sucked into this body, and believes in the end 
it is the body. So the fear at death is when we see the breaking down of the body or the stopping of the body, we die. Because it identifies with the body. So when the body dies, and the body really dies, the chitra thinks it dies with it. Because it doesn't see that there are two separate entities. That the body is one entity and the chitra is another entity. So we have to, through meditation, get a clear understanding that the body and the chitta are two different things. And that's why the chitta, when we sit and do our contemplation, I chop up the body in front of us, put it up, yeah, and see all the parts of the body, yeah, until there's nothing, when we sit on the meditation seat, until there's nothing left on the meditation seat, and each part, I mean, we see it more or less vividly, we cut it off, you know, we put it out. We put it out in front of us. I mean, no matter if you do it orderly or you just dump it on a big heap. But in the end, when the last part of the body is put out, most of the people, you know, put the head out last. Yeah? So if the head out last, with the brain inside, <clears throat> or then maybe you put it separately. It's a nice way, you know, to, to feel the brain uh, the softly wash up. <clears throat> messy brain, you know, out there, you know, and then you think, hey, what is that? Yeah. And if you do that exercise, that exercise is very si similar to the similar the Lord Buddha gave to us. You take apart the card, and you see only the parts, so then you ask, where is the card? And we do the same thing with the body. So we put the body down, every part of the body, I mean, you can do it very coarse, you can do it very detailed, you put it out and you see it with your inner eyes. And then ask, where is the body? I mean, is the hand the body? Eh? Is it the brain the body? Hmm? Is the eyes the body? Are the ears the body? What is the body? Huh? And then do, you know, I mean, there you can be really creative. Put the body back in different kinds of shapes. Yeah? For instance, put the <clears throat> put the arms at the after and put the legs you know, down at the shoulders, you know? And then have a look, you know, how it is. Just create something new. You know, yeah? When do these body parts and then understand, when do these body parts become a body that we can identify with? That is one thing. Be creative about these things, you know, putting it back together, yeah. I mean, you can do all sorts of things, yeah. Most of the people have their brain actually in their eyes, yeah. <clears throat> Maybe they can uh, put them their ass in their brain, you know, and, and, and see, you know, what is the difference. Huh? Just a joke. <coughs> but it's funny because you can create a lot of things, yeah. But the understanding is that when all the body parts are out there, so what is sitting there and watching these body parts, that we have put all of them out there. What is it? And that is, that is one of the ways, you know, how to separate out the chitta from the body. And we have to do that not only one time, ten times, a hundred times, maybe a million times, until it really clicks, until at that moment when the, when the chitta really really understands, sees all these body parts, then it will understand it's not the body. And this kind of understanding we need. And with that, we broke the third fetter. If you have already worked on the first two fetters, I mean, that is, that is our entry card for stream entry. Then, with, some, with a good Samadhi, we can cut loose. Because in the Samadhi, we can let go of all these things. The deeper the Samadhi is, eh? then we can let go of the first three fetters. And then when we come out of the Samadhi, I mean, we know that we are Sotapan. We are stream mantra. And we never come back, <coughs> at most, after more than seven lives. So that is our guarantee. But to understand, I mean, if you're worried about death, 
then we have to worry about this, that we, until we die, that we can make this separation possible, that we can separate out the chitta from this body, that we can really separate them and see them as two entities. The chitta is the one that passes on to the next life, and the body stays. And all the material things, and all our worries, all our work that we put just into this body, was in vain. Everything that we put in, in cleansing the chitta, will go into the next life. Our desires that we developed over this life, you know, I mean, will go with us. Eh? Our hatred will go with us. Eh? Our merit will go with us. And our evil will go with us. So. And we will reap yeah, all the results that we sow in this life, mostly in the next life or in, or in the lives after to come. Actually, it was quite a nice talk. Yeah? Mm. But, uh, the problem was, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope these cameras record it. <laughs> so, any questions? So now, now you go. Now you will become in, a, in less of a year. You have will have a lots of free time. So use it to to make to make this kind of contemplation to get that body separated out. And the further you go in this kind of contemplation, the less of a threat is death. Mm -hmm. huh? But we don't forget also you need to make the, the chitta calm first. Because the calmer it is, the sharper the, the chitta is, and the, the easier is it to understand that separation. If the chitta is dull, yeah? if the chitta is not sharp, it's just like dull, you know, I mean, it is entertained by anything, yeah? then it will not understand, because it will still linger, it will still have lingering attachment to all these functions of the body. But if the, if the chitta is sharp, if it, it is sharpened by the meditation, by samatha, by, by just a, a calm meditation, by staying with one object, be it the breath or be it the Buddha, yeah? then, after that, you know, it is easier to be subjective and just see, not uh, to be objective and just to see, oh, there's a, there are the body parts, and there's something that observes all these body parts. And that helps us understand in the separation that we are not the body. And the more we do towards the end of our death, and the more time we invest into it, I mean, we do have the chance, you know, that, that death becomes a very easy process, especially, you know, if we deal with another important factor in death, that is pain. So if we do some meditation, that is long enough so that, that we can learn how to deal with pain, then, I mean, the death is not a, a, at all a problem. We just get out of the car and go on. We don't even have one tear left for the car. Yeah? We used it up to, <laughs> to its last breath. Close the door, you know, if, if we even can close it, you know, if it didn't fall off, in between, <laughs> and then go on. Yeah. So, in order to practice the sharpness of the mind, we do our meditation now. So, we sitzen jetzt in Meditation und trainieren den Geist einspitzig zu machen. And just concentrate on either on the breath, the tip of the nose, knowing that the breath is coming in, knowing that the breath is going out, knowing that the breath is shallow or deep, and breath is longer, or breath is shorter, 
all passes stronger, in passes stronger. Just know all these things, because this knowingness leads us to the knowingness of the heart. That's the whole purpose of this. It's the path or it's the way to the heart. Wir konzentrieren uns, wir entspannen den Körper und konzentrieren uns auf das Futter und auf das Futter. Wenn wir merken, da ist es dort, wir schauen back to the breath and back to the breath. This is relaxing. We turn our attention back to the back of it.
Thank you. 